Chololo has taken the measure of his opponent and found him wanting. Other confrontations await. Some with enemies more implacable. Enemies less inclined to run. Beating back the territorial advances of an aggressive neighbor is one thing. Learning to live with hyenas is another. It can be a hard lesson for a young leopard to learn. Tonight, school will be in session. It's time to hunt. And when Chololo sets off, a hyena will follow. Hyenas know what efficient killing machines leopards are. They also know if they can get to the kill before the cat trees it, they can usually take over. Chololo has killed well, but judged badly. The dead kudu is too heavy to haul off, and a powerful adversary lurks nearby. <coughs> At the sight of a hyena, leopards often turn tail, not Chololo. They struggle. They feed. They struggle some more. Both animals are on edge. The commotion could attract unwanted attention. And when another hyena arrives, the scales are tipped against Jololo. Tonight's lesson is all about hyenas, and it's a hard lesson indeed. <laughs> Even a minor bite from one of these brutes could prove fatal to Chilolo. The hyenas are out in force, but they are not alone. Besides hyenas, Chololo fears one other creature. soon realize the lioness is alone, a situation they know exactly how to handle. Oh, my God. 
The lioness is soon put to flight. Even a lion can't fend off a pack of hyenas. Chololo was wise to play it safe. I really felt for Chololo that night. He gave it his best shot and lost out. But that's how Leopard learned. As for the hyenas, the kudu carcass was gone within the hour. His dignity intact, but his stomach still empty, Chololo moves on. Eventually, catching a whiff of something that might make a meal. A rock python. It matters little that the python isn't venomous. Leopards instinctively know to be wary of snakes. Hunger and curiosity drive Chololo to press his luck. He's in the neighborhood. She was putting up a real yowl, a mix between a meow and a growl, which set your neck hairs on end. At first, all I could hear was a couple of cats in the bush. Then the female came down. She'd spotted Chalolo and was trying desperately hard to distract him. She left her perch, trying to lead him away. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what was worrying her. She watches as Chololo uncovers her secret. A dead cub, no doubt hers. There have been reports of female leopards eating their dead cubs, and adult males may kill cubs they didn't sire. But this cub had been dead for some time, and it looked as if the female had been feeding on it. We don't know what killed this cub. But it definitely wasn't Chalolo. But for Kim, there's even a bigger surprise. Then it dawned on me, this was beauty. The female I'd filmed years before. She'd been a good mother back then, and probably still was. But obviously things don't always work out. For every leopard cub that doesn't survive the first six months of life in Malamala, it seems there are several hyena cubs that do. These youngsters must scramble to stay alive too. But hyena families den together, providing the added safety of numbers. At least three groups, called clans, live in Chololo's territory. Maybe 35 hyenas in total. Like close-knit extended families, hyena clans hunt, feed, and socialize together. Their young stick close to the den for the first year. But if there is one lesson all hyena cubs learn in this part of Malamala, it is to keep their eyes on Chololo. Anxious to cache his prey beyond the reach of hyenas and tree-climbing lions, Chololo goes out on a limb, 
and learns another lesson. Another hard-earned meal is lost. Day breaks over the Sand River. Even in the dry season, it attracts all manner of animals, including Cape Buffalo. The water is a big draw for animals, providing plenty of opportunity for predators. Rivers can also serve as natural boundaries for leopards. The Sand River wraps halfway around Chinolo's territory, so he patrols here regularly. Chalolo's appearance seems to unsettle the buffalo. But he's not the only hunter around. The equation can be simple. In Malamala, where you find water, you often find lions. They know the routine well. Sooner or later, everyone stops by for a drink. It's only a matter of waiting for the right moment to strike. Amid the huge buffalo bodies, a newborn greets the world. During calving season, buffalo and antelope are especially watchful. The calves are extremely vulnerable. The lions have the herd squarely in their sights. There's still daylight left though, and the big cats like to work in the dark. But the buffalo aren't sticking around for that. Fear ripples through the herd, and they flee, hooves making muddy thunder. Soon, Real thunder engulfs Malamala. Amid the gusts and lightning strikes, Chololo has made a kill. But still, He's edgy. The rolling thunder that kept the antelope from hearing his charge could easily conceal the approach of hyenas. But by the time one appears, Jololo has already made his move. of weather spooks the buffalo. Some panic, others mill about confused, but there is no escaping the frightful storm or the predators. The lions have downed a bull, but it may take their stubborn victim half an hour to die.
His cries will not be muffled, even on such a noisy night as this. As the lions labor to complete their grisly task, another drama plays out nearby. A hyena has chanced upon an opportunity. Chololo, trying to stash a kill, hit a snag. Now he faces a struggle if he's to hang on to his meal. Chololo can tree a 200 pound carcass in a flash, but pound for pound, hyenas own the most powerful jaws in Malamala. Nothing short of an earthquake is likely to make her let go. Then, as the stubborn two settle in for a long tug of war, another familiar face arrives. His enemy's enemy could be Chololo's friend, at least for now. Chololo seizes the moment, dragging his kill higher. The lioness pauses briefly, as if to think things out. Then, seconds later, she makes her move. In Mala Mala, survival is often a game of inches. And this time, Chololo measured things just right. Too big and heavy to climb higher, the lioness has been checked. Chololo's prize is barely a foot from her nose, but that's enough to put it out of reach. If she falls, she will almost certainly be injured. And as any good climber will tell you, the trip down can be tougher than the ascent. Finally, a meal in peace. Thunderstorms may be brief here, but they often presage long rainy spells. The downpour seems to dampen animal spirits. This year the rains have been really bad. Plenty of storms and massive floods, the most we've seen in living memory, and twice as much as the highest ever recorded. Only days ago, the Sand River was a trickle. Now, it's a raging torrent, only fit to watch at a safe distance. The bold pachyderm tests the current. As Kim watches, the elephant gets a devastating lesson in water power. It surprised me to see this elephant bull in serious trouble. These guys usually have the whip to stay out of bad situations, but the current was way too much for him. If he's lucky, he'll regain his footing somewhere downstream. As soon as the sky clears and the flood ebbs, hunters regain their rhythms. After the deluge, Chololo emerges with a new attitude. 
He seems to know now how to play the game. Tenoro seemed to move to the next level of maturity. He came through the flood with a better hunting technique and more confidence. You could tell he knew he had established himself as the dominant male in the area. Malamala is a raucous symphony of animal calls. But this morning, the decibel level seems to be rising fast. A female leopard and her cub take notice of the uproar. And as more voices join the chorus, the cub heads for cover. The reason for the ruckus and the cub's flight? Tololo. If a male leopard meets a cub he didn't sire, he could harm the little one. The female decides she needs better cover. She monitors the situation constantly, taking care to stay hidden from view. Tololo may not notice every animal he passes, but every animal seems to notice him. When the danger has passed, mother and cub find each other by call and response, and gradually their anxiety subsides. summer, fawning season for the Impala. Mothers leave the relative safety of the herd to be alone at the big moment. It's a risky step since predators know nature's calendar all too well. their feet in minutes, newborn Impala have few defenses, but they do have a single invisible advantage. Nature sends them into the world scentless. It will take this youngster days to develop the fragrance so welcome to hunters. Chololo can sense opportunity and he's not alone. Every predator out here knows there's young game afoot. But who will find it first? The lack of sense is a great thing for the fawns. Combined with their ability to lie still in tall grass, it keeps many of them alive. But the predators seldom give up. Searching for mother's milk, 
a fawn breaks the spell. Their reunion draws the attention of a hyena. Hyenas have the stamina to chase prey until it drops, provided they can keep their target in sight. Something has galvanized the herd, and the predators sense it. The hyena tracks the herd. The Chololo takes a different angle. It's a lone female. Perhaps there's a fawn to be found. Sensing Chololo's on to something, the hyena heads his way. But Chololo's nose keeps him one step ahead, leading him on, until he runs into beauty with a kill. To protect her meal, beauty goes aloft. Hyena lingers, unwilling to concede defeat. That is, until Chololo has had enough of his presence. After Beauty has cashed her kill, Chololo follows her into the bush. She may be ready to mate. What's surprising about Chololo is that he'll go far out of his way to track down a female and then ignore her, even when she's thrashing around right in front of him. This can go on for days. Maybe he can sense when the time's not right to mate yet. In fact, neither leopard is quite ready to expend the energy needed for mating. Chilolo sets off on his solitary path, leaving beauty to lull. All too soon, he reacquires his standard accompaniment. After a while, tired of the hyena's hectoring, he settles down for a rest. Across Africa, bushfires shape the ecology. In Malamala, blazes like these help maintain the balance between grassland and shrub that produces this perfect leopard habitat. 
The amazing thing about this scene is the absolute lack of concern among the animals for the fire. I'd always been told that if you want to keep animals away, you make a fire. And that's true, if there's a big roaring blaze headed for the animals, they'll go into a frenzy. But if a fire's just burning along, it becomes part of the landscape. And no one much cares about it. A series of moist summers has left the bush very dense. Dead grass has built up. Premium tinder, primed to burn fiercely. Conflagrations like this can last for weeks, flaring when daytime winds fan the embers and fading at night. For leopards like Chilolo, a fire is an inconvenience. It burns away his scent marks, so he has to patrol that much harder. On the other hand, with the cover burned away and the dry leaf that are gone, he can find and hunt down his prey more easily. As he calmly patrols this hellish landscape, Chololo has heat of a different sort in mind. He's about to achieve another stripe of adulthood. Mating time has come. Once they get going, they'll be at it for four, five, even six days. Chilolo keeps moving through his territory, and the female follows him, even when they leave her territory. The entire region is their honeymoon suite. They'll mate, wander, mate again, oblivious to the changing scene. Beauty and Chololo dally near an impala herd, but they're not interested in hunting. the tension no more. Impala scatter every which way. Some run so close to Beauty and Chilolo, they trigger the predatory instinct. By chance, the two latch onto the same luckless Impala. I'd never seen this sort of collaboration before. Normally he'd chase her off, but maybe he's more tolerant because they're mating. But as quickly as Chololo and Beauty collaborated, they're competing again. In a show of strength, he overpowers his consort. Marathon nears its end. Chololo begins to pull away from beauty.
He's drawn back into the isolated existence he usually leads. Even ensuring the survival of the species doesn't exempt him from the work required to preserve his place as the main leopard in this corner of Malamala. Though singed and smoky, Chololo's world remains vibrant, and he sets about reminding its inhabitants who's boss. It seems a neighboring male was all set to annex a portion of Chololo's turf, but that plan was hatched with Chololo away. Now he's back. At the point where two leopards' territories meet, there's a sort of fixed line, and then there are these overlapping zones that both cats wander in and out of. They probe and test constantly, trying to see how far they can push things, until the other guy says, back off. One thing is clear. This is Chololo's territory, and none of it will be ceded without a fight. Rising over Malamala, Mala, life goes on in all its murderous splendor. The killing takes place at a killing pace, with Chololo in the thick of it. Now, when he brings down an impala, and hyenas make off with the kid, he doesn't give up. Instead, he takes advantage of the herd's confusion and attacks again immediately. This is a master at work, sleek, confident, bringing all his skills to bear. He's absorbed the lessons of experience and put them to good use. If good fortune continues to wash over Chololo, he'll travel his range for years, perfecting his strategy and tactics, and siring many cubs. I came here to get inside Chololo's world. But as long as Chololo can strut the strut and growl the growl, this stretch of Malamala Mala is his. The price for this rich life is constant dedication and unyielding vigilance. For Chololo, the only way to walk is proudly and alone.